I might do something I've never seen anyone do, probably because it's a weird idea. It's out with the old and in with the new. But it's not really out with the old. I'm talking about sunscreens. So I tend to buy my sunscreens a bunch at a time. And I mix and match them. And when I start to get really low, I reorder things. And some of my sunscreens are just about gone. Some of them are coming back. Some of them aren't. And I have some things to say about sunscreen. So I'm going to be giving you some nitty gritty details that I think everybody should know. I'm the Hooded Lid. Welcome to my channel. If you want to know more about sunscreen, keep on watching. The most important thing you should know about sunscreen is one, wear it. Two, wear enough of it. Three, the best sunscreen in the world is the one you put on your face. If you can't find a sunscreen that you like, that's cosmetically elegant, that doesn't smell um, unpleasurable to you, you're not going to put it on and you're not going to get production. But let's say you know you should be wearing it and you are wearing it. I used to, for a really long time, put my sunscreen on my middle finger from the crease of the digit here. And I figured, yeah, that's enough. And I thought that was a quarter teaspoon. I know we should be wearing a quarter teaspoon. And one day, on a whim, I decided to make that same measurement and get my teaspoon set and transferred into my teaspoon and I was shocked to find it was nowhere near. Then I added some to my quarter teaspoon to see how much it was and dumped it in the middle of my hand and now I had a visual locked in of how much I need to use. Now for a couple of days I went ahead and used the teaspoon so I could get used to that amount and now I know I'm using enough. Another thing you should be aware of, if you put something on at 7.30 or 8 o'clock in the morning, it's basically worn off generously by the time you get back from lunch. So let's say you work 9 to 6, you take your lunch 12.30 to 1.30, that's about it for you. If you're going to be outside for any period of time, more than, I don't know, maybe 15 minutes, say you're going to take a break and walk around the block a couple of times or something, I would reapply. The sun's rays don't care what time it is, and they don't care that you put on sunscreen earlier. Your makeup cares a lot, though, and that's where the super goop comes in. That setting mist, I really love to reapply with that. It's a little weird, and I'm not here to talk about it. I'm here to talk about my other stuff. I just got something from YesStyle. YesStyle is a brand, well, YesStyle I think of is kind of like Amazon for skincare, for Asian skincare. Uh, these sunscreens are from Korea, but they carry Japanese products as well, and I'm, I'm sure they carry products from... Actually, I've seen products from the United States there, too. Uh, their shipping is free if you order over a certain amount. I think it's $35, but it's slow. It took me, I think, about two weeks to get this. So I keep an eye on how much I have left of my various sunscreens, and then start perusing and looking for new ideas, and then I replace things that didn't really work for me, and I reorder things that I really love. So let's get started with these particular sunscreens because I got good, good stuff. Let's start with the stuff I know. This is my favorite, Earth's Recipe Waterfall Sun Gel. SPF 50, PA++++, just three. I don't care. This is something that Gothamista mentioned several years ago and I bought it and I loved it. It had a fresh citrus smell. This is something I'm about to say. I looked forward to putting on my sunscreen in the morning. Who can say that? I'm guessing nobody. I love the way it smelled, and I love the consistency. I love that it never felt heavy, and it felt that it absorbed. It didn't just lay on top of my skin, and I loved it. I bought bottle after bottle after bottle. I got to the point where I was buying two at a time, and then a bottle smelled differently. I thought, well, maybe this one's off because I got it from a different seller. And the next two, the same. I'm like, okay, they've changed the scent and I don't really like it. it. Now it smells like alcohol, but there's oddly no alcohol in it. I have been flirting with other things, but the truth is, even though they've changed the scent and they've changed the formula just a little bit, this remains my very, very favorite sunscreen. So I got two bottles this time. I just... 
I love the way it feels on my skin. I just don't like something heavy. It, it bothers me. Let me tell you a little bit about it. Um, this has oxanate, which is not very stable, and it's UVB. It has octocrylene, which is stable, but it's not very strong. <laughs> it's UVA and a little bit UVB. Oxisolate. That is stable as far as I can tell. It's a UVB, avobenzone, non-stable UVA. Now these guys need something else to stabilize it, and I believe it's the octocrylene that stabilizes everybody. Then we have something called Tinosorb S that is stable, and it's a UVA and a UVB. This is one of the newer chemicals in sunscreen protection that is available in Europe and Asia, but is not available in the United States because in the United States, sunscreen is considered a drug and it has to go through the FDA. And to go through the FDA, you have to do trials that are very expensive. And apparently the maker of Tinosorb S doesn't want to pay for it. And neither do the sunscreen companies because, well, why should L'Oreal pay for it when everyone else is going to use it once it passes? I'm really not understanding why the company who makes Tinosorb S doesn't just do the trials. Except maybe they're afraid someone would copy their formula. So Tinosorb S, you'll never see on the carton as Tinosorb S. You will see it as, and I'm not a chemist, so have a giggle on this, bis ethyl hexyl oxyphenol methophenyl trisome. <laughs> I will write that below. That's my favorite sunscreen. Um, boom. Claris. Soft Airy UV Essence SPF 50 PA++++. Plus, 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 plus. It has niacinamide and vitamin E, so it's got some skin communicators. And it is Juvenal A+, plus, which is a UVA, and Juvenal T150, which is a UVB. These are the same kind of chemicals that are available in the Asian markets and the European markets, but not in the U.S. markets. And they are so much more stable than anything that's approved in the United States. I'll tell you what their names are, what you'll see on the label, what to watch out for, and I will write it below. Be entertained. The Uvenol T150 is ethylhexyl triazone. That's not bad. The next one, the next one will be. The Juvenal A+, plus, which is the UVA, is diphylamino <laughs> hydroxybenzoyl hexyl. Hi. Those are things you want to watch out for. Um, this is my second of this. I don't love it, to tell you the truth. They say that it's an essence and it's airy in the name, but I don't find it to be essence or airy. It's just your regular cream, akin to something you would find at Neutrogena, except I find Neutrogena's to be heavier and sticky, and this isn't heavy or sticky. I don't like it, however, by itself. If you are using a full quarter teaspoon, it's too much but I find that I end up mixing it with other things that I'm also not liking or things that I want to stretch the life out of or things that are too emollient and I need to kind of break up that emollient. So I got it again because it's a big bottle. Uh, here's my old one, it's almost empty and it's a big bottle, it's a good price. You may like it all on its own. For me, it's a little, it's a little too heavy if I'm using a full quarter teaspoon and you should be. Then I got a couple of new ones. Whenever I do something from YesStyle, I like to get the things I know I can depend on and then get some things I haven't used before that I've seen other people recommend. And I always take a grain of salt. Uh, Gothamista does a lot of videos on sunscreens and I find, except for this one, which I love, I disagree with her almost all the time. So I kind of use her videos in the opposite manner. For instance, this one from Thank You Farmer, she had pilling issues with, and she recommended another one from Thank You Farmer. So I ordered this one, <laughs> and I quite like it. I never had any pilling issues with it. 
I finished one already and this is my backup, which I've already started using. Well, here's another one that she's recommended. And like I said, I kind of used her to the opposite, so I knew I was really taking a chance ordering this one. I broke it open today and put it on. It smells fantastic, I have to say that. I did have a little balling and pilling. I noticed right on the side of my face and I thought, well, I didn't want to touch the rest of my face, so I touched my neck. And I had the same thing with my neck. So I let this absorb for a solid 20 minutes before I put on my foundation and I had no problem. But this is one you got to be a little careful with how it reacts to your moisturizers and your foundation. I don't know why it did that. I'm just grateful I was able to kind of control it by giving it a long time to set up. So let me tell you a little bit about this one. This is by Perito. It is Centella Green Level Safe Sun. This is SPF 50 PA++++ for. It also has hyaluronic acid, uh, lavender oils, um, a derivative of uh, olive oil, and vitamin E. So it's soothing and has antioxidants. Uh, vitamin E is an antioxidant. The actives are Juvenal T150 and Juvenal A+, plus, which is the UVA. So both of the Juvenals are in this, and there's none of those American octocrylene, evobenzene. I'm not saying they're American. I'm saying they're, avail they're all that's available in America. So none of those are in this. It's just those two ingredients, and they're stable, and they work well. So this one I, I kind of like so far. It's just had one day, but there you go. And the last new one I got was from Make Prem. Now I got this for a couple of reasons. Wait a minute, am I almost done? No, I want one more I'm gonna tell you about, but this is one I just got. The Make Prem, uh, Angie from Hot and Flashy said she liked it. Now Angie only likes physicals. She does not like chemical sunscreens. And physical sunscreens are titanium dioxide and zinc oxide. And I think Othamista also liked this one. Now Angie and I disagree on sunscreens. She loves the Australian gold. The first time I put that on my face, I was like, oh my God, it just sucked the life out of my face and I deemed it would never touch my face again. I do use it on my chest because it is tinted, so that way I don't have this big flaming red chest and a normal looking face. And if you give it about 20 solid minutes to set up, it will not rub off on your clothes or on your seatbelt. What's the point of putting your sunscreen here? You put on your seatbelt and it all rubs off. So I do still use it, I do still buy it, but her idea of what's drying is very different than what my idea of very drying is. So we will see about this. The ingredients, of course, are the zinc oxide and the titanium oxide, but I also like that this is a really big container. So even if I don't like this on its own, this will be a mixer, you know? <laughs> It'll be like a uh, soda water. And the Make Prem also has the Centella Asiatica and something called uh, Salvia Hispanica Seed Extract. The Centella Asiatica is what Dr. Jart markets as tiger grass. It's the stuff that tigers would lean into to heal cuts from their fights. And it's supposed to be very calming for the skin. I don't know, I've used it in a couple of products and I figure it can't hurt. I mentioned the uh, Thank You Farmer. I just wanted to talk you through this one because I also kind of like this one. I use this by itself. I don't mix this with other things, generally speaking. Uh, sometimes I mix it with the clears. This is the Thank You Farmer Sun Project Water Sun Cream. It's SPF 50 plus plus plus, only three. It is oxinotite, oxinotate, oxinot look, I'm not a scientist. Homosalate, octisalate, octocrylene, all of those are UVBs, and all of them are not stable, except for the last two. So the octisalate and the octocrylene are stable. They help to stabilize the first two, which are stronger. So you have the stronger ones that degrade really fast. One of them degrades like 10% in 30 minutes. That's nuts. And then the other two that are a little weaker, but they're stable, so they help to stabilize the other two. That's why the things that are approved in America are just so ass backwards. We should be doing the tinosorb and the juvenals, but 
And this one also has uh, titanium dioxide and juvenile A+. So, and the juvenile A+, of course, is a UVA, and titanium dioxide does UVA and UVB. This has sodium hyaluronate and centella asiatica and aloe. It also has alcohol. It's the only one that has alcohol in this group, so I don't like to wear it often. It doesn't smell like alcohol, and to me, it doesn't feel drying, but there are probably other emollients in there that are covering up that drying feeling. I don't know if they're counter affecting it. Some things like glycerin is actually good for your skin, but other things that are called conditioners, like dimethicone is called a conditioner, it doesn't actually soften your skin. It's like a little liar. You know, it fills out your all the microscopic cracks on your face so it looks smooth and it feels smooth. And so your your little fingers communicate to your brain, oh it's soft, but it's not really soft because the minute you wash your face it all went away. It doesn't really condition your skin. And there could be ingredients like this in here that are making the skin feel soft but they're not really counteracting the alcohol like a glycerin would. So I don't know. I'm not a scientist but I do like this enough to have reordered it and that's all I got to say about that one. So there you go. My first sunscreen video I hope it was a little helpful to you. I hope I've introduced you some pretty good products that come from the Asian markets, and I hope you have fun exploring. I would love to hear from you what sunscreens do you love and why. For me, they have to be cosmetically elegant. The most cosmetically elegant for me is this one. And that's going to wrap it up. Thanks so much for spending some time with me. I hope it was informative. I hope it was helpful. And I hope you come back again. In the meantime, I'm wishing you a great day.